Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week asks you to prove the following statement, that the gradient cross with uh, del g is equal to the zero vector, given you have some kind of g the function, some function g with components x1, x2, and x3, where g is a continuously differentiable function in R3 on some space s, you can say, on some set s. OK, so recall here that the gradient function is going to be defined as, the gradient operator is going to be defined as partial, partial x1 in this case, because we're just in R3, partial, partial x1, partial, partial x2, and partial, partial x3. So keep this in mind as we're going to go ahead and do uh, do this proof here. So, so we notice here that when we have del g, we're just going to take the um, partials at g with respect to each one of these um, variables here. So when we have del g, we're going to have partial g, partial x1, partial g, partial x2, and partial g, partial x3. So just extending that notion of the gradient vector to the function g, the continuously differentiable function. So we're assuming that all the partial derivatives exist on some set s. Okay, so now we need to take this crossed with this and prove that it's equal to the zero vector. So we're going ahead and take the gradient crossed with uh, del g. And I'm going to set up this matrix here. It'll be equal to i, j, k. We're going to go ahead and put these components in the second row. So partial, partial x1, partial, partial x2, and partial, partial x3. And then finally, we put del g in the, in the final row. So we have partial g, partial x1, partial g, partial x2, and partial g, partial x3. OK, so we need to, we need to take the determinant of this matrix. So. I'm going to go ahead and erase what we have up here. Just give myself room to write. OK. So we're going to go ahead and take the determinant. So we'll start off. The determinant of this is going to be equal to. So first, we have this times this minus this times this. So to simplify this, we have partial, partial x2 times partial g partial x3. We're going to go ahead and simplify that notation to partial squared g, because we have two, the second partial derivative. So this, can, this function is going to be um, twice, uh, twice differentiable. So partial squared g, uh, partial, x, partial, partial x2, partial x3. So that's this times this. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. So minus partial squared g, partial x2, partial x3. And notice that it doesn't matter in what order I take x2 and x3, or in, in which the order in which I differentiate doesn't matter because they're continuous uh, twice differentiable function here. So it won't matter. And that's all times i minus, because of the cofactor expansion. We're going to do the same thing for j. So we have partial x1, uh, partial g, partial x3. So we're going to have partial squared g, partial x1, partial x3. Minus, so minus this times this, so partial, par partial squared g, x1, x3. I think you can see where this is going. Partial squared g, partial x1, partial x3. And this is all times the j component. And finally, we have the k component. So the k component here in the cofactor expansion, we have um, partial squared g, partial, uh, one, partial x1, partial x2. So partial squared g, partial x1, partial x2. Minus here, partial squared g, partial x1, par, uh, partial x2. So partial squared g, uh, partial x1, partial x2. And this is times k. OK, so as you can see here, we have inside these same terms. So partial squared g over uh, of partial x2, partial x3, and it's minus the same thing. So all these expressions in here are equal. So we're essentially going to have in here, all these are going to cancel out. We're going to have. Uh, or we're going to have, I guess you could say, 0i plus 0j plus 0k, which is equal to 0, 0, 0, which is equal to, another notation, the 0 vector. So we've just proved that, 
the gradient crossed with del g is equal to the zero vector. And it's important to note that as a result, we got a vector as our answer because we're taking the cross product of something, and the cross product will always yield a vector as the answer. So that's it for today's advanced knowledge problem of the week. And for more of these problems of the week, you can see our problem of the week playlist here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. And to visit us at centerofmath.org, click this link here. Thank you for watching.